We have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him. Yes, worship him. We have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him. Let's worship him. We have come into this house to magnify the Lord and worship him. So let's wor worship him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, so forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. Let's worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. Let's worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So let's worship him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to the uh, Sunset Road Church of Christ that meets here at 611 Sunset Road in Burlington, New Jersey. It is a great joy to be here, to recognize, to worship, and to praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father God. Uh, it is especially a great day today because uh, it's Easter Sunday as the world recognizes it, although we celebrate his resurrection every Sunday. But today is a special day, so we want to praise him just a little bit more. Uh, if you are visiting with us, you are our honored guest. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, you are our friend right now and a guest. We want you to be friends and eventually leave as family. So if you have any questions about the service or anything you heard, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. If you're worshiping online also, welcome. We ask that you would block out all distractions as well and sing and praise God with us and, and give yourself in prayer and open up your heart to receive the word this morning. If you're in the auditorium, we ask that you would silence all electronic devices at this time so we can worship without any distractions this morning. The first selection this morning is, is a good and powerful song because it's why we celebrate Jesus and we have hope because he rose with all power in his hands. Jesus rose with all power in his hands. Jesus rose with all power in his hands. Yes, Jesus rose with all power in his hands. In his hands, you know that he died on a Friday evening. Yes, and he rose on Sunday morning. My Jesus rose with all power in his hands, oh Lord, in his hands. Don't you know that he rose on Sunday morning? It was just before the break of day. Jesus rose on Sunday morning, yes, just before the break of day. You know that he rose on Sunday morning. It was just before the break of day. And my Jesus, he rose with his all power in his hands. Oh, Lord, in his hands. You know that the angel came down from glory and he rolled the stone away. You know that the angels came down from glory and he, he rolled the stone away. You know that the angel came down from glory and he rolled the stone away. And Jesus rose with all power in hand. Oh Lord, he did. Yes, my Jesus rose with the whole power in his head. Yeah, and my Jesus rose with the whole power in his hand. You know 
his head, and you know that he, he died on Friday evening, but he rose on Sunday, then you Jesus rose with the power, Jesus rose with the power, yes, my Jesus rose with the power in his hand, oh Lord, in his hand. Amen. Our next section, we know not one. I believe that's hymn number 47 in our books in sacred selection. After this, we'll go to God in prayer. Yeah, hymn number 47 in our sacred selections. There's not a friend like Jesus. After this, we'll go to God in prayer. <coughs> There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing, no, not one, and we're singing, no, not one, uh -huh. let's good heal all our soul, diseases singing, no, not one singing, no, not one, I'll tell you that my cheek. Jesus knows all about our struggles, and I know that he will help till the day is done. No, no, there's not a friend like the Lord, the lowly Jesus singing. Keep singing, no, not one, no whole friend like him is so high and holy singing, no, not one, and we're singing, no, not one, and yet no friend is so meek, and Lord, we're singing, no, not one singing, no, not one, and I'll tell you that my Jesus, us. He knows all about our struggles, and I know that he will help God till the day he done. No, no, there's not a friend like the Lord Jesus singing. No, not one singing. No, not one there is not an hour than he is not, not nearer singing, singing, no, not one hand drinks so dark, but his love can cheer us singing, no, and we're singing, no, not one and I tell you that my Jesus knows all about our struggles and I know that he till the day he done no no there's not friend like the the little lowly Jesus singing no and we're singing no not one, and I'll tell you that my Jesus, he knows all about, about our struggles, and I know that he, he will guide us until the, the day he's done singing there, there's not a friend like the Lord, the lowly, just singing, no. And we're singing, no, not one. Let us bow. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for allowing us to assemble here this morning and for the purpose of gathering uh, to, to worship you and, and, and praising you and adoring you and learning more about you and fellowship with 
with uh, our fellow saints. Uh, we're so thankful we have uh, this freedom where we can gather uh, just to worship you without any interference or any distractions or harassment or anything of that nature. Lord, we're just so grateful that we have that freedom in this country. Lord, we know that many throughout this world do not enjoy this freedom or are being persecuted even to this day just for uh, <coughs> admitting the, the faith that they have in you through your dear son, Jesus. Um, Lord, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus, and the awesome life that he lived and the gruesome death that he died, Lord, um, that was able to give us hope of eternal life with you in heaven someday, Lord. And we're so grateful that he was so righteous that the grave was not able to hold him, Lord, that he was able to rise again. And that gives us the hope that though we may die in the physical form, that, that we'll be able to rise again and be with you in, in, in eternity and for everlasting life. Uh, Lord, we ask that you bless the congregation here at Sunset Road as we strive to do your will. Uh, <clears throat> please keep us on the right track and, and help us in the areas that we stand in need of, Lord, and encourage us in the areas that we do well. And uh, we ask that you bless Brother Turner as he, as he ministers to the church here and bless him in his travels and bless all those who are traveling for the lectureship. We pray that they have safe passage to and fro and that they're edified uh, during their time there. Lord, we ask that you please forgive us of our sins and our many shortcomings, Lord. Help us to exhibit and uh, show some self-control and control of our, 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 our bodies as we walk this earth, that we might be an example to those uh, that see us, though they may never open the Bible, they may, ever, they may never come to your building to worship you or, or learn of you, Lord, but the only God that they'll see or the only Jesus they'll see is, is us, Lord. So help us to be mindful of that. Help us to not cave under the many pressures that we face, Lord, in this life, uh, through our jobs, through families, our <clears throat> however we face it, Lord. Just help us to be strong. Help us to, to never cave, to know that you're with us and through everything, that you can undergird us and build us up, Lord, and that we're able to bear the things that we face, Lord. So it's our prayer that as we gather here this morning, that everything that we do, every song that is sung, scripture read, prayer, uh, raised up to you. It's pleasing and acceptable in your sight and just brings glory to you, God. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm before scripture reading this morning will be hymn number 173 in our sacred selection book, He's My King. Do you believe that Jesus is your king this morning? Let me hear you say amen. 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 Thankful for the sacrifice that God gave through Jesus so that we may have eternal life in the way to communicate with God through Jesus our king. Hymn number 173, He's My King. After this selection, we'll have scripture reading for this morning. All day long of Jesus I am singing, he's my song of joy will ever be, all the while he keeps my heart bells ringing, oh his love is everything to me, he's my king and all I they love him, he's my king, and no other serve him, and all day long, in her raptured praise I sing, and he's my savior, he's my king, streams of love around soul are flowing from his heart loves everlasting spring and that is why here I faith in him I'm showing and that is why and in this song thing yes he's my king and oh I they love him you know that he's my king and no oh, Will and all day long in raptured praise I sing. And he's my savior, my king, my blessed king. In his light, I'm going home to glory with 
the souls who trust his saving grace. I'm going home to sing and tell his story in the blessed sunshine. This way, you know that he's my king and all I dearly love him. Yes, he's my king. No, the is above him in a hall. day long in raptured praise I sing. And he's my savior, my king. And you know that he, he's my king. Oh, and oh, I really love him. Yes, and he, he's my king. There's no other above him. All day long in raptured praise I sing, and he's my savior, my king. Yes, now he is my king. Oh, yes, I dearly love him. You know that he's my king, and no other is above him. Well, now all day long, yes, and to praise I sing, and he's my Savior, my King, my blessed King. That's all right. He is my King, the blessed King. If there is any question that you have in your mind about that, just stick around a little bit longer. And I'm sure some of those answers will be, or those questions will be answered. Amen? If you will, turn your Bibles to Luke 23. Luke 23, and we'll be reading the verses 35 through 43, 42, 43. Luke 23, verses 35 through 43. I want to keep those that are traveling in our prayers minister being one, and uh, several families that are out on the road, so we just want to pray that they reach their destination, and most importantly, return home and find it as they left it. Luke 23, and the Bible reads, and the people stood beholding, and the ruler also with them derided him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God, and has also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and in Latin and in Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews, as it read. And one malefactor which were hung railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deed. But this man, this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. I have read Luke 23, verses 35 through 43. May the Lord have the blessing of the hearing, reading, and the doing of his holy word. Our selection before Brother Ken Spence brings the message this morning will be found in our sacred selection book, Salvation Has Been Brought Down. It's because that Jesus died on Friday and then rose on Sunday morning, salvation has been brought down. Amen. After this, Brother Spence will bring the message. 
Jesus gave his life for ransom, John the old Calvary, on the Calvary cross, Calvary, paid the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown, you ought to praise the holy name, salvation has been brought down, let's praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down from heaven, go and shout and tell the world round, tell it today, go on and tell it today, you ought to preach the of God that we might a shining crown. You ought to tell the Lord of salvation is fully free. You ought to spread, spread the news all over the land. Go preach it and come on and tell it all for praise the Lord. Salvation and brought down and all alone without a friend he self paid it all yes he you know that Jesus paid it all in his blessed promise sweet victory found come on and praise it holy name yes salvation been brought down come on and pray praise the Lord yes sound well from heaven go go and shout and tell the Lord go preach it and to the people and come on and tell it today come preach the of God that we might a shining crown you ought to tell, tell the lost, yes, and salvation is full and free. We ought to spread the news all over. Go teach it in, in every nation, all over creation. Praise the Lord, yes, salvation is been brought down, and there's a blessed home free, hey, way over, way land, and glory land, blessed, well now I have trusted in his love, and now you ought to praise his holy, holy name, salvation has been brought down. Let's stand pray, praise the Lord, yes, and salvation has been brought down. And we ought to go, go and shout, tell and tell the world around. Go preach it and tell it. Come on and tell it today. We ought to preach the word of God that we might have a shine. You ought to tell the lost, yes, and salvation. We ought to spread, spread the news well all over. Tell it afar. We ought to tell it afar. Let's pray. Praise the Lord, yes, salvation has been brought down. That we ought to pray, praise the Lord, yes, salvation has been brought down. From heaven go, go and shout, this yes, and tell it, and tell it today. Come on and tell it today, that we ought to preach the of God, a shining, we ought to tell the lost, yes, and salvation is, and we ought to spread, spread the news, yes, all over the land and sea. Salvation has been brought down. Amen. Amen again. I was looking for one. Where is it? Oh, there it is.
is a blessing, church. It's a blessing to be here today. Amen. Amen. This mic is set for taller people. Amen. And amen again. It's a blessing to be here, certainly. Always a privilege to be uh, back at Sunset Road. Amen. Uh, to be present here to share a word. And, and certainly our prayers go to uh, Brother Turner, who is traveling at this time, or has already traveled, to the uh, national uh, lectureship. Amen. Amen. Amen again. Uh-huh. 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 Um, so this is being recorded and streamed. I know it's members of, of camp that they'll tune in during Sunset's worship. Amen. Amen. Because we certainly support y'all. We pray for y'all like y'all pray for us. Amen. Amen to those members of Camden. I tell you, when I get there today, do not be surprised. You're going to hear the same thing. Amen. <laughs> amen and amen again. Amen. I, I'm, of course, I'm by, by myself. Amen. My wife and my son are, 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 are on their way to, to Camden. We tried to work out the schedule last minute. Amen. To get here also, and it, it just wasn't going to happen. Amen. So, so I'm here by myself. I think was sister, sister Colleen said, I didn't recognize you because you ain't had no hair. <laughs> then she said, I ain't recognize you because I ain't see Dominique. I'm like, well, amen. And my twin, as he has been stated, amen. Amen. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. He is this tall now at seven years old. Amen. 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 Y'all talking about, wow, come take him. Amen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But it is a blessing. It is a blessing indeed to be here to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of friendly faces. Amen. As we dig into the word. You don't mind. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Amen. Luke chapter 23. We will start at verse number 35. Luke 23, verse 35 and following. Amen. I'll be reading from a different translation. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Amen. Amen. Um, very similar to the King James in this manner, in this place. Uh, uh, don't do that. They say go ahead. Say amen. They say go ahead, but we, we in the word. Amen. 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 Y'all, y'all want to sing? Yeah. yeah, see, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, I, I should have known better. This is what happens when you come around kinfolk. Amen. We all laugh, we joke, we like, hey, hey, do your thing. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. You know that it paid my heart in love, and wrote my name above. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole, whole. Now let us have a little with and let us tell him all about, oh, he will hear, and he will answer. And now when you feel a little prayer for, as your heart to heaven is, I know you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, oh, right. I may have doubts and fears, might be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend, watches day and night. You know that I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk, Jesus makes it right. Oh, well, now let us hear, and let us say, Lord, he will hear. I know he's going to answer by end. Now when you feel, Lord, is your heart, I know you will find with Jesus makes it right. Oh, well, now let us have and let us hear, Lord, he will hear and he will answer. And now when you feel as your heart, I know you will find a little 
with Jesus makes it right. Oh, right. Amen. Amen. Jesus will make it all right. Nearly 2,000 years ago, this here weekend, amen, Jesus made it all right. Amen. Amen. Historically, nearly 2,000 years ago, Christ came, Christ died, and Christ rose. Amen. Amen. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful uh, in every day that we live that God did what he did for us. Amen. We're going to talk about it this morning. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. It's shiny. Amen. Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse number 35. Amen. 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 The Bible says, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, if you are the king of the Jews yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged, there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And all God's children said, amen, 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 again. There are several TV shows all of us can point to and say they were great to watch, amen. Um, One of my favorite was the 18. If you have a problem and no one else can help. Maybe you can find it. The A-Team. Amen. That was uh, me and my, my younger brother, Aaron. We, we used to love it, and we would love the antics. We would love the adventures. We love the guns. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say amen to that. Amen. But, hey, but, but hey, we love everything about it. But, but one thing we would do is we would select, after every episode, who we were. He always wanted to be Hannibal because Hannibal was the leader. He always loved it when a plan came together. I was always by default B.A. Barakas because I was angry. <laughs> Amen. But we would alternate that. But, but as, as I got older now, as I got older, I understood Face. He was the ladies' man. Amen. I'm saying I understood him. I was never him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, and we both, we both were Murdoch because Murdoch made crazy look cool. Amen. Amen. But, but with every episode, we might argue over who we were based on based upon their behavior during the episode. And we'd, we'd identify, we had to be honest and be like, well, well, today I'm, I'm, I'm Face, and today I'm B.A. Barakas, today I'm Hannibal, and today I'm, I'm Murdoch. And, and we would always do that because we'd look at the episode, and, and once we saw the episode, we'd keep up the same activity. Through our behavior, we started to realize, okay, well, you're more like, and and you're more like, and so we started stopping our fighting because we realized we were just like who we saw on TV. Here in the scripture reading, we see, from our perspective, the same thing. Two people interacting with Jesus while he's on the cross, and, and because we've been distracted with what Jesus says to one of them, we miss the greater portion that speaks to us today. If you'll lend me your heart and ears to this thought. Which one are you? Which one are you? Today, we look at what the Lord gave us. Amen. We look at how he helped us that Passover weekend nearly 2,000 years ago when he became our great sacrifice so that the death angel would pass over us in judgment. Amen. A- a- amen. Y'all, y'all don't miss y'all shout. Amen. Praise God we're in Christ. Amen. 
And being in Christ has the privilege of being passed over in, in, in judgment. Amen. That means our destination is eternal with him. Amen. That, that's a reason to shout hallelujah. That's a reason to celebrate. Not just this weekend. Every first day of the week. Because it was the first day he got up. Amen. It was the first day that he got up. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get, get into Pasha and those things historically that the first century did and continue to do. That, that's a whole other story or another subject we're not talking about today. But today we are examining the greatest offering ever, ever made. Let me start by saying or comparing the polytheistic setting of that day. And what I mean by that is it was during that time period you had a lot of folk who worshipped a lot of different gods or worshipped many gods. Those who worshipped Roman gods and Greek gods and those who worshipped Norse gods. That's Norse mythology, Thor, Odin, and so on and so forth. But, but you go and you break into all of that and, and it's important to understand it, that time period, because Jesus stands as something that is completely different from the rest of them. Amen. Th there's a reason that we continue year after year to assert that, that others like Buddha or Confucius or Muhammad and others are, are still dead, but Jesus is alive. Amen. Th there's a reason for that. There's a lot of religious confusion today because of those things of old and new things that have replaced those items. And, and what we saw historically from those, I could take this here, what we saw historically from those time or that time period was there were individuals who would worship these many gods and these many gods had a purpose or served the purpose or were, were considered gods because they were fighting each other for supremacy. They were fighting each other for power. Amen. And so you picked who you would worship and, and that God had to fight other gods to prove himself or herself as being superior. Amen. Amen. And, and what would end up happening is because of all of that fighting, humankind had to prove themselves worthy to receive a blessing from the quote-unquote gods. Upon examining that time period or the gods of that time period, even before it, the only story of historical accuracy, of historical record, that God took human form for the purpose of becoming the offering to save mankind because he loved mankind, that, that offering that would save, sanctify, justify, and consecrate human beings, the only God who fits the mold of that offering is Jesus Christ. There is no one else. Amen. This is very much the reason why it is written in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12 that the Bible says there is salvation in no one else. Amen. For there is no other name, let me sit there for a second, no other name, no other authority, no other power under heaven given among men, mortals, whereby we must be saved. By his offering, we can be saved. Amen? Amen. I, I could just stop right there and say, that's my sermon. God bless you. But I'm not going to do that. What we see, what we see in the scripture reading, that we've examined in Luke is a full picture of the gospel given in a moment of time. It's often misunderstood because what we tend to look at, what we tend to see in the scripture, we see a thief instead of seeing ourselves. Here in the scripture reading, Jesus is on the cross. Amen. Jesus is on the cross. We ought to sit there. In that thought, Jesus is on the cross. Jesus is accomplishing the task for which he came. That day of atonement offering, the Jews would recognize for all the people of the world. In the larger pericope, in the larger section of the scripture, Jesus' accusation is the focus and the ridicule because of that focus. His accusation is if you are the Messiah. If you are the Messiah. It comes from several sources. The first place it comes from is the crowd. The crowd says in verse 35, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The accusation comes from the soldiers in verse 36 and 37 that they came up and offered him vinegar or sour wine saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. His, his accusation comes even in verse 38 from the government. They put the accusation above his head that said, 
this is the king of the Jews. It was mocking him. It was making fun of him. The accusation was, if he's really the Messiah, he wouldn't be in this position. But there is something biting, very biting when it comes from one of the thieves who, crucif who was crucified with him. The first thief uh, gives his accusation or accuses him and says, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Almost like, well, if you is the Messiah, you can save yourself. If you is the Messiah, you can save us too. Amen. But his accusation is, is not ridicule. His accusation is, is, is actually an honest statement. His accusation is dependent upon truth, but from a selfish place. The honest statement, ain't you the Messiah? Like, I know you're the Messiah. So he's not saying maybe you could save us. He's saying you should save us. Well, save yourself first and then save us too. Hmm. The retort from the other thief, the second thief, is something honest and humble where he speaks to the first thief, don't you reverence God? Don't you recognize God? Since we're under the same sentence. We're under this sentence rightfully. We done done the crime. Amen. So, so we get in this punishment. We deserve this punishment. But, but Jesus, he's done nothing wrong. He's, he's suffering this and he's not supposed to be suffering this. Both, not, not, not people, from both themes, both views, both perspectives offer a picture of what was taking place at that time and what's even taking place today. Both recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Both recognize Jesus as God Almighty. And both gave recognition to the problem at that time and the problem today. The first thief, walk with me, the first thief approached Jesus from a traditional viewpoint of the Messiah at that time. Y'all got time? We're going to talk about it. Uh, the traditional viewpoint of the Messiah at that time was there were three types or three things that the Messiah should do. The first was that he was a supply Messiah. What that means is he takes care of all my needs. He's just supposed to give me all my needs. Oh, Lord, I, I don't want to talk about it, I, I, but I, I got to talk about it. There's, there's, there's a guy, Dr. Umar Johnson. Some of y'all know him. Amen. Amen. That's my Philadelphia brother. I love him, too. But, but he made the statement, said, every church ought to be doing this and this and this and this. And I, and I often say it's, it's kind of funny because everybody want what the church got, but don't nobody want the Jesus that the church got. Amen. You should take care of my bills. You going to get with Jesus? No, they don't want Jesus. They just want everything else. Amen. Well, to a certain degree, you had people at that time that wanted that type of a Messiah. Take care of everything I'm in need of. That's the type of Messiah they look for. The other Messiah they looked at was the religious agreeing Messiah, that everything we've been doing religiously, we just need him to codify what we've been doing, him to verify what we've been doing, to say, hey, y'all, y'all already good. The third Messiah they need was a, they were looking for was a military Messiah. You know, make Israel great again. Amen. Amen. I ain't saying that. I'm, I'm just saying that's what it was. Like. Amen. All of this, all of this is evidence in Jesus' temptations. You take a gander at Matthew 4. You take a gander at Luke chapter 4, and you find that the lust of the flesh. All three are categories of sin that Jesus suffered, was tempted with. And all three point to the Messiah they wanted. The lust of the fr flesh, the bread. That was the Messiah they wanted. The, the lust of the eyes, the, all the kingdoms of the world, that, that's what they desired. The, the pride of life to throw himself from the pinnacle of the temple, that, that, that was the Messiah they desired. These, these viewpoints were common and they were understood amongst the people, which is why the folks said, verse 35, Matthew 27, 42 says it a bit plainer, that he saved others. Let him come down from the cross and then we'll believe he's the Messiah. Huh. The second thief first approaches the first thief, but from a different perspective. The second thief reverenced Jesus. Amen. He reverenced Jesus. He recognized Jesus' innocence. And he approached Jesus humbly. Y'all know the, state, the saying, the statement? Remember me. But keep me in mind when you come in your domain of rule, when you come into your kingdom, when you're ruling, remember me. Both these recognize the Messiah. The first thief was selfish. 
demanding instant deliverance from the cross to be back in these streets. Amen. I say back in these streets. I said back in these streets. You know, doing what you want to do. Well, you might say only God can judge me. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Going back to what I wanted to do before because, because I want to do what I want to do and I just want to be free from this punishment so I can do what I want to do. Huh. The second thief was penitent. The second thief accepted his consequence and requested to be remembered in Jesus' kingdom which is, I'm on this cross and I'm next to you. I'm getting what I deserve. I know how worthless I am. I know I'm deserving of this punishment, but Lord, I'm just asking you to remember me when you establish your kingdom. Talk to you for a brief moment. The phrase verse in verse 43 that says, in your kingdom, he understood from a Jewish scriptural understanding that the Messiah was indeed returning. So his thought was, when the Messiah comes, or the Messiah comes back, it's at that time that I want you to remember me. In the future, remember me. Uh, where is this taken from? This is actually taken from an understanding of Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We ain't going to go there, but uh, right there it speaks about future judgment. And the belief was that at the future judgment, that's when God would establish his kingdom. So this is brand new to have the Messiah establishing the kingdom while he's present. It's the reason why Martha stepped to Jesus when her brother Lazarus was killed, or her brother, brother Lazarus died, I should say. Her brother Lazarus died, and, and, and Jesus says to you, do you believe, to her, do you believe that, that, that he'll resurrect? And she says something that seems strange. She says, I believe he will resurrect again in the future. And Jesus has to let her know, I am the resurrection and the life. In the same way, the second thief says, remember me on that day in the future. And the first thing out of Jesus' mouth is today. Amen. They're thinking future tense. He's saying, no, 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 right now, today. Amen. Oh, Lord, if, if I had time, I don't have time, but I, I might have time. If I had time, I would tell you sometimes we like to put off salvation until later. Amen. We like to put off coming to Jesus. Let me get all my sin in. And then later when I'm older, amen, uh, look here, y'all think I'm talking about folk outside the church. Let me talk to folk inside the church. Sometimes right now we'd be like, well, let me do what I'm doing right now. Um, I got to ask forgiveness later, amen, like, 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 like God don't need you, want you right now to change your life right now. Oh, well, let, let's go forward. Let's, let's go forward. In the, if I was to give you a point to, to, to highlight for your meditation this week is verse number 43. The statement he says, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It's at this point Jesus' response to the second thief, perhaps even heard by the first thief, was today. Not in the future, today. The time is immediate. Amen. We, we started this, this sermonic dissertation Noting that Jesus is on the cross. Jesus is in get her done mode. Amen. Jesus is in the completion phase of his ministry. And he says, today you will be with me. The first thief wanted it done today. But in his own way. I want it today and I want to be free from this punishment. The second thief wanted whatever Jesus wanted. Whenever Jesus said it was going to take place, he was like, I'm just fine being here today with you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Some of y'all missed it. Let me, let's, let's dig in. Jesus' reply emphasizes a few things that the cross does not restrain me. Amen. The cross is only for a moment. His statement, when this is over, you will be with me. Amen. Now, we, we deal with in paradise, and what we've done in times past, we've talked about the theology of the perusa, and that paradise was a place of waiting, a place of, of holding, not, not heaven. 
Oh, Lord. And we've gotten into arguments that we've, we've never really needed to get into arguments. And, and, and can I talk about it for just a, a brief moment? This is not a salvific passage. Why? Because for salvation to come in which they would obey the gospel, Jesus first had to die. Jesus is still alive on the cross. And when Jesus was alive, Jesus could say what he wanted to say when he wanted to say it. Just like when he healed the man and said, uh, uh, the man with the withered hand, and he, or, or, or the man on the, the stretcher that's lowered into the house in Capernaum, and he says, your sins are forgiven. And they said, who is he to forgive sins? And he says, to show y'all, I can forgive sins, take up your bed and walk. You, you got to understand, Jesus had to show his power a few times to show how powerful he was. That he's not limited by the mind of the human being. Amen. And so he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, now I, I started on that path. I got to finish on path from a theological perspective that the Hebrews understood what's noted in the Hebrew Bible. Paradise was the idea of a garden, most notably the Garden of Eden. Amen. Which was paradise. So when he says you'll be with me in paradise today, he's thinking, I'm going to have peace after this is all said and done. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's a whole nother sermon for another day. But the Bible says, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. You know, your cross is only for a moment. You, you, oh, Lord. Your cross is only for a moment. You might live 65 years. Amen. Your cross might be for 63 years. Amen. But, but your cross is only for a moment. Amen. That, that even, even Jacob, when he met Pharaoh over there in Genesis chapter 46, he said to him, the, 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 the days of my journey have been few. They've only been 125 years. I don't think we got any 125-year-olds present in the building right now. But sometimes we got to look that eternity is greater than what we have right now. And eternity with Jesus is far greater than anything we can deal with and suffer with in this lifetime right now. Amen. Amen. The, 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 the thought in regard to paradise is not really important. The focus really is with me. Oh, Lord. The focus is really with me. Can, can, I, can, I, can I talk to, to my, my, my saved folk that ain't always been saved? Amen. You've been somewhere. Amen. You were making your way. You was riding with somebody and they were on their way to a party. You ain't got to say amen, just shake your head. I got you, bro, I got you. But you're on your way to a party, and, and, or they're on their way to a party, and they take you with them, and the person gets to the door of the party, and they're like, okay, cool, you could come in, but they tend to freeze the line and say, wait a minute, who is that? And the person at the door turns around and says, oh, he's cool because he's with me. Do you understand how important it is to be with Jesus? Oh, no, no, no. Do you catch it that he says, today you'll be with me. Amen. That, that means you're going to walk with me. Look, I'm not worried about him, but you today will be with me. Oh, Lord. How many folk in the church today can say, I'm with Jesus? How many folk can holler out aloud and say, hallelujah, I'm with Jesus, and just be satisfied being with Jesus? Everything ain't right right now. Everything ain't going well right now, but thank God I am with Jesus. Amen. That's not, that's not my sermon. Amen. But, but, but what we see, what we see on the cross with this interaction is a picture of the gospel and a picture of the issue in our society surrounding the gospel back then and even now. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Mark 8, Matthew 16. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. This is an issue of today. Amen. With the thieves, let me talk about both of them. The first thief was focused on himself. He wanted deliverance from the cross. The second thief was focused on Jesus. He was satisfied being on the cross next to Jesus and simply being kept in mind. Some people want what the first thief wanted. To know the Messiah, but to live a life doing what they want to do. Being in these streets. Amen. Some people are like the second thief. They're honest folk. Amen. You're, you're, you know who you are. Amen. 
you know who you are. You know, you know honestly how worthless you have been. Hello. How reprobate you have acted in life. And you are just satisfied being with Christ seeking him. He won't deliver you from your cross. He'll deliver you because of his cross. Amen. As I, as I get ready to close. It is impossible, church. It is impossible to give back to the Lord what you owe him. Amen. Look, we don't, we don't say this enough. But God did not owe us anything. God did not owe us anything. In spite of that, he gave everything. Amen. So that we could become his flock. The offering that he gave, that Jesus gave, was greater than anything we could ever give him. Amen. So on this day, I simply ask you to reflect on these two thieves and the message of Jesus from the cross itself. Because of the cross, there is freedom from sin. Because of his resurrection, there is freedom from death. I ask you plainly, which thief are you? Are you the one that recognizes that he's God? You recognize his power, but, but all you want is, is to be free of the cross so that you can get back to the familiar mess that you know. Hello? Are you the one that, that recognizes that he's God? Because both recognize that he was God. But, but there's the thief. You come recognizing who you are right now. And you simply are satisfied on your cross so long as you are with him. Which one are you? Here's the truth. You can be that way outside of Christ and you can be that way inside Christ. The decision of how you walk from today, hello, how you walk from today onward is on you. Will you come close to Jesus? Jesus is welcoming. Amen. If you're already in Christ, let's take our cross serious. Amen. Let's take our cross serious and walk with him. If you're not in Christ, come forward. Take that first step. Amen. The water is right there. Amen. Come forward and take that first step in obeying the gospel, being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins in, in Jesus' name. And then, and then with both of us, in and outside of Christ, look here. Then let's bring more to him that are in need of the same blessing of Christ, his cross, and his resurrection. Today is the day to change your life. So which one are you? If you're like that second thief, we're going to stand in a second. You come on down these aisles and give yourself over to God in baptism. Today is the day to change your life. Amen. We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation. The opportunity to come is right now. The opportunity to, to say today will be different. I'm choosing different. I've been in the church. I've obeyed the gospel, but I've been, I've been running. I've been in these streets. I've been doing what I want to do. Today's the day to say it's time for me to get serious. I will get serious. Right. And I'm going to walk with him. Today is the day if you outside Christ to say, I need him. Amen. I'm going to come to him. And I'm going to live for him from this day onward. Because the time we have on earth is short in comparison with eternity with him in glory. Amen. Amen. If you're present today, you're ready to come. Why don't you come as we together we stand and we sing a hymn of invitation. Have you, you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace? This Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washing the blood in the soul? Garments 
Let's my listen. Let's know are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? How are your garments by less? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? What a wonderful message on this Resurrection Sunday. We'd like to thank Brother Ken Spence for, for, for what I call a decision time message. Amen. We, it's good to see him again, and thank you for the message. At this time, I'm going to read the um, prayer requests. Since, okay, I have one person, Sister Sheila. First off, I want to thank God. We'll bring you back. My portion of a healthy friend for the healthy to be. I haven't been here for a minute because I've been going through a whole lot health wise. But God is good. I'm still here. I want to thank all my brothers and sisters for all your prayers, your cards, your texts, your phone calls, and all your thoughts. I really appreciate it. Another thing I want to say, if anything is bothering you as far as health-wise, go to the doctor. Don't try to self-medicate like I did. Had I not tried to self-medicate, I probably wouldn't be going through as much as what I'm going through now. So let that be a lesson. Let me be a lesson. Um, something else I want to I wanna ask prayers for is my place of employment. I've been back to work maybe about three weeks. And already there's been two physical altercations. The place is getting worse and worse. I'm kind of afraid for my safety. The last fight, which was Tuesday, was through a manager and an employee, which was physical. Okay, the person, you know, got locked up, this, that, and the other. But I really feel, because he's mental, and I know he is, but I really feel like he's going to come back and retaliate. I'm asking you all to pray that he doesn't, but I feel like he is. And if he does, Pray for my safety. Maybe it's when I'm not there, but um, I don't feel safe anymore. So again, I'd like to thank you for all your prayers, and please continue to keep me as well as my family in prayers, because during my time, I haven't been the nicest person, okay? And my husband will tell you, I, it, I, it wasn't intentional. It was the medication. That was some of the side effects, and, but I haven't been a nice person. So please, just help me come back. <laughs> help me come back. I'm not fully back yet, but I am up and about, and, you know, I'm at work and this, that, and the other. So I'd like to thank you. Okay. Definitely keep me in prayer. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, church. Um, I just want to give God the glory. Um, this past Tuesday, my cousin, um, 44 years old, had 
a heart attack and she died pretty much. Um, but glory to God, you know, they gave her CPR, pumped her chest. My other cousin was there when she fell out and was able to give her CPR and she is here with us and with her family, with her kids today on Easter. So I thank God for his glory and I just pray that she does what she needs to do um, with her health. Also praying for my dad um, who is going through his own medical um, issues, um, may have to have open heart surgery. So I'm just praying that everything goes, goes well with him and he can get um, his stuff together as well. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's been 90 days since I'm out, out of church after my surgery. But God embrace me. Give me a new family in Christ. Thank you for all my family. Thank you for all my support and my prayers. May God bless you. I love you guys. Can this church say yeah, please? Thank you. Good afternoon. I want to thank everybody in here for their cards, their representation at my wife's service. I appreciate e every last one of you, and I thank you more than a thousand times. Amen. Good morning, church family. Happy Easter. Um, I'm requesting prayers for my whole entire family. I have been asking for prayers for my cousin, Selena L., who was um, battling brain cancer. She lost her battle on Tuesday. Um, I have been requesting prayers for my family because I have a lot of sick family member. We, we are a small family and over half of them are sick, the older ones. And just three months ago, we lost Selena's brother to cancer and also their mother a year and a half ago. And now I'm looking, my mom is sick, my uncle is sick, my other aunt is sick, and I have some cousins and my siblings are sick. So it's kind of scary, but I'm not worried because I'm in the Lord and I know if I just can hold on to him, whatever happens, I'll, I'll be okay. But I worry about my family members who don't know the Lord and also my children who have, you know, strayed away from the Lord. And I just ask you to continue to keep us in prayer. And thank you for your encouragement to me because it, it helps me a lot. And I just ask you to pray for our family as we prepare to lay Selena to rest for comfort, strength, and peace. Thank you, and thank you for the message. Um, from Joan Kenyatta, it says, I would like to thank those who called, sent texts, and kept me in their prayers. Please also keep me in prayer as I'll be going out of town attending a funeral of my aunt. From Aisha Tolliver, it says, thank you um, for that timely message. Please keep Sister um, Deanna in your prayers. Also, please continue to pray for my family. Thank you. From Sister Desiree Thomas, it says, please keep us in prayer as we travel this week. Keep Nina in prayer for decision making and safety. Thank you. Please pray for healing for um, Lois Carter, Louis, Lois, Louise Carter, um, Lois Carter, excuse me, who is dealing with back and knee pain. 
from Mallet 1, it says he's asking prayer to get right with God and for his life. And Sandy Holmes um, says, good morning, church family. I'm requesting prayers for my family, the Colliers, the Ross, and the Holmes family. My cousin, Selena L., lost her battle with brain cancer last Tuesday. We lost her brother, Harold Collier, to cancer just three months ago. And their mother, Aunt Gladys Collier, a year and a half ago. Please pray for the family for continued strength and peace as we... Um, prepare to lay to rest Selena um, this week. Thank you and thank you for the message. given us his grace and mercy. It is on these times that it is a blessing to be a child of God, to be able to lift up holy hands to God who can put broken lives back together. He is the only one that can take our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups and to make sense when things make no sense. We are super delighted to have with us Brother Spence to walk through the text, lifting up Jesus and him crucified. This is still decision day. We continue to reach out to anyone that might want to get their lives right with God today. The waters of baptism are still waiting. And we can take your confession. You can go home a child of God. For those who did come forward, we might not have all of the details. We may not have the correct pronunciation of the names may not communicate the brevity of the circumstance, but God sees and hears. And even for those who did not respond with a card, you might have responded from the seat God sees and he hears. And so we turn our lives over to him. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, we come today Thanking you for the blood of Jesus. Thanking you that we have this privilege as the sons and the daughters to lift holy hands of thanksgiving, hands of praise, hands to petition a plea of help. We are just celebrating that our dear sister Kirkpatrick is restored and that she is able to be with us here today to be in the assembly. We're grateful, as she said in her words, I am back. Lord, we pray for the workplace. We pray that there can be peace and this can no longer be a toxic worse workplace. We know, Lord, in the, in the workplace, you are still there and navigating our protection. And be with our sister and all of the colleagues that it can be a place of safety, not only that, but a place of productivity. We pray our dear sister Jewett for her father and we are just so saddened by the close very close uh, situation with the cousin but we are
grateful that her life was spared. And that she is here today. And we're thankful for the medical team that was able to respond. But we know behind them, Lord, was your hand of mercy. And we're grateful that you used them to keep this loved one with us. We are happy for our brother that 90 days later has been restored from his surgical prison and that he is here today celebrating, thanking you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Continue to be with him and others that are trying to navigate from health procedures and Others are waiting for positive outcomes. We are grateful that our dear brother Lee Collier is here today. We pray for our brother as we still mourn the loss of our dear sister, Mary Collier. But we know, Lord, that as the revelator said, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord their works do continue to be with our brother continue to give him the strength he is a strong man he's a man of faith and we know Lord that you have given him a wonderful legacy through his wife and her legacy even now impacts all of us and we say thank you we come praying for our sister Sandy Holmes, so many of the family members that are sick at this time, and we just ask a special prayer for our sister and cousin Selena, who lost the battle to brain cancer. We are just so sad to hear, but Lord, we thank you for the time that she was able to be shared with us. Bless our dear sister, bless the entire family, all of those who are wrestling with some kind of ailment, all of those who are dealing with some form of cancer, which seems to be the story of many of the members in this family. But as they lay to rest, Selena, may they find comfort. May the word of God be there to be an encouragement to those who do not have a relationship with thee. We pray for our sister, and we want to thank you, Lord, that she is here today and ask for special prayer for traveling grace as she is going out of town to attend the funeral of her aunt. We ask a special prayer for her as well as for her family her husband and all of those in her family, may they find peace and comfort during this season. We pray for our sister Aisha Tolliver and we ask that you bless that family and thank you Lord that you have been there to keep them during this time in so many ways. And we ask a special prayer for Diana that you will give her comfort as well. We pray for Desiree Thomas during the traveling season this week, and as well as to keep Naira in prayer for decision making, for safety, all of those in the Thomas family. Lord, we pray. We pray for Lois Carter, and who is dealing with pain and ailments and pray that they can have the comfort, your healing grace, and your mercy. As well for Brother Mallet, warn, help him to be able to restore his life back to you, help him with many different issues and prayers. Lord, all of these things. Bless them and put their hedge of protection around them. 
but not only these alone, but others who silently lift a plea of help today. Those whose cards were not filled out, Lord, comfort them, their families, guide their lives each and every day, especially those of the household of faith. We close this prayer thanking you for Jesus who fled and died. He gave his life so that our names could be written in heaven. In his name we lift this prayer, this petition, these pleas. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say, Amen and Amen. Be prepared for the take of the Lord's Supper. If you are in need of the communion packet, we ask that you would raise your hand at this time. And the brothers will get one to you. And if you're in need of a communion packet, raise your hand at this time. And the brothers will bring one to you. Hymn number 321 at the cross. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? And at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. The world today has paused to celebrate Easter Sunday. But we, the people of God, every first day of the week, our minds go back to Calvary. For many, this is Easter Sunday, but for us, this is just another Sunday. And next Sunday will also be Easter Sunday. And the Sunday after that will be Easter Sunday. Because what Jesus did is too precious to stop for once a year. Isaiah said, in Isaiah 55, 1 and 3, come everyone who thirsts, come without money, without price. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. John 6, 55, chapter 7 and 37 said, for his flesh is true blood and food for on the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. The psalmist declared in Psalms 111, 2, 3, and 5, Great are the works of the Lord, full of splendor and majesty. He remembers his covenant forever. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, and 8, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the leaven, unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Focusing on Calvary. Saying, the Son of Man 
must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Luke 24 and verse 7. Calvary was an unusual spot of ground. If you take a close look, you can still see the stain of blood that ran down Calvary's heel. Can you see it? It was at Calvary where our sin debt was paid. It was at Calvary where the bitter waters of life were made sweet. It was at Calvary where the Savior's heel was bruised, but the serpent's head was crushed. It was at Calvary where our eternal check for sin was signed and the ransom price was paid. A young God-man showed up by the name of Jesus that knew no sin, but for us he became sin. Unlike many of us, Jesus knew when he left heaven what was going to happen on planet Earth. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. Every day is nothing but a mystery waiting to unfold. We can be healthy one moment and we'll bust today, and tomorrow we can fall into a dilemma that will change our lives forever. We wait until crises show up and then try to find a solution. However, God prepared the solution before the crisis. That's why it's always good to walk with him. Jesus came to suffer and to die for the sins of the whole world. Jesus is hanging on the middle cross with the nails in his hands, spikes in his feet, and a thorns on his head. On a cross at each side hangs a thief. Can you see him? Jesus' enemies thought they could humiliate him by allowing him to die in the midst of criminals. And even today, people are still trying to embarrass Jesus. When you listen to the comedy hours and the things of that worldly nature, you hear jokes about our Lord and Savior. And as a matter of fact, they also like to crack jokes about people that follow Jesus. Can you hear them laughing? But be careful how you laugh and joke about Jesus because Jesus is no joking matter. Jesus is real. He is serious. He is alive. And he paid an awesome price for our sins. While he hung on the cross, Jesus is lifted about 18 inches from the ground. God used his enemies to do mission work for him, and then he sent them all to hell. They failed to realize that Jesus said in John 12, 32, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. Today, we remember. Amen and amen. Um, <clears throat> let us pray to bless the bread. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us um, to be in your house today to commune as brothers and sisters once again. Um, thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, um, whose um, body was um, pierced on the cross at Calvary, God, and let this bread that represents your son, Jesus Christ, be a blessing to us all. Um, please forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this cup that symbolizes your body that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Pray that everybody takes this cup 
the man that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight and in your remembrance. In Jesus' name, I pray good things. Amen. Amen. Today, it is interesting how that some churches will only take the Lord's Supper once a year, once every six months, once a quarter, but the same churches will take your money every Sunday. I would have to raise a question if you are in a denomination that takes your money every Sunday, but you can't get bread and crackers every Sunday. That sounds like you're not getting your money's worth. That's just a parenthetical note. But giving back to God has always been like the communion practice every Sunday, every first day of the week by the people of God. First Corinthians 16 gives us that record. Verses one and two, now comes in the collection of the saints. As I have given orders to the churches of Galicia, so do ye, that upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. Let there be no gatherings when I come. He also said, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, But this I say, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Let every man give accordingly as he purposeth in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. But Jesus said it best. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Give to God what is right and not what is left. Christian giving is an act of worship. Give to God what is right and not what is left. In Jesus' name, we lift this prayer. Help us, Lord, to give. You've given your son. He gave his life. He gave us salvation. He gave us everything and all that we could ask for. Today we humbly bow our heads to thank you. Thank you that we have the privilege and the means to give back. Forgive us when we don't give like we should. May we never ever allow the things of this world to distract us from the Bible teaching that you have always taught to give. And even in the old covenant with your people, Israel, they were commanded to give. And even today, we continue to give back to God. Bless every family, bless this congregation, that whatever we receive, may we be responsible, may we use it to build your kingdom, may we bless those and help those who are not fortunate and have the means to give. But more importantly, not just our financial resources, our time, our talents, and our gifts, and our entires we give to thee. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen and amen.
Hymn number 205, A Friend Like You. <clears throat> number 205, A Friend Like You. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. We often make to wonder just why should be so well in every tribulation this life must bring to view. And oh, Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh, oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. Yes, we need someone to guide us and to share Yes, and we need someone to love us and tell us what to do. But oh, Lord, we need, yes, a friend like you. They say that many trials will come to vex the soul. That cloud, but to him dim for us a gold well in it. Every sad condition to lead us safely through. And oh Lord, we need yes, a friend like you. Oh, oh Lord, we need a Savior upon this weary road. Yes, and we need someone to guide us and share our heavy load. Yes, and we need someone to love us and tell us what to do. And oh Lord, we need, yes, a friend like you. At this time, we would like to welcome those who are visiting with us today. I did not get any visitors cards, but if you're a visitor, would you please stand at this time? Let's, okay. Do you mind telling us your name, um, please, uh, where you're visiting? Okay, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. Curtis, okay. Amen. It's good to have you with us on this um, desk. Please come back. All right, we also welcome those who are visiting virtually. Um, please come at your next appropriate time. At this time, um, I'd like to mention all the announcements that we have coming up. Um, we want to do something special for our graduates this year. We have several people um, who work with um, our students who are graduating either from college or high school. If you have a, if you're a graduate or have someone who's graduating, please give me that list of names because we want to um, bless them with a gift. From Sister Tracy McCurry, um, says the Siani Strong Foundation is having a Mother's Day candle sale. Please see me for a form um, to check out the many selections from Little House of Candle. Youth, if you're interested in attending the 54th North Annual Northeastern Youth Conference, which will be held um, April the 12th through the um, 14th, um, please see me today um, if you're interested in attending the youth conference. We plan to have um, a group and a bus going in that direction. Um, birthdays. Birthdays for this week, March 31st through April the 6th. Um, today we have Desiree Thomas. Please wish her a happy birthday. Um, on the 1st of April, we have um, Kimber Hayes. On the 3rd, we have Shannon Allen. On the 5th, we have Madison McKenzie. 
And on the six, we have um, Brother Bill Crump. Are there any birthdays that I missed? All right. We, we, that's not this week. We'll get you. <laughs> we'll get you. All right. Um, we have a church fellowship today. Um, and what we expect is we always like visitors to be able to go first in the line as far as the food is concerned. After the visitors go, we would like our seasoned citizens to go next. And then um, we'll proceed um, in a fashionable manner. So if you're a visitor or if you're a seasoned citizen, we want you to um, get in the line first. Also, um, I forgot one other announcement. Um, we have a baby on the way. The Blunts are expecting um, a child very soon, and we have a gift basket for them in the foyer. Um, gifts in the form of Pampers, um, Pamper and diapers or wipes, gift cards, onesies, and monetary gifts are welcome. So please bless them as their um, child is soon to be coming. But um, for the fellowship, we would like the brother with the close in prayer to also pray for the food. Thank you. Please stand as we sing the final selection. I'll be listening. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be where listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And if my heart is right when he calls me, if my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be where listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Father God, we thank you for this day and for the things that we heard. Thank you for the fellowship and the worship. Most of all, we thank you for uh, your son, Jesus, the sacrifice that you gave for us and for his resurrection that we may live and see you at the end of this journey. We pray for those who have requested prayers today that you would strengthen and heal them and be with their family members as well. As we are about to leave here, we also pray that you would bless the food and the hands that prepared it. Bless those who are less fortunate than we are, that they will be able to be fed today, and you may use us as you see fit to attend to their needs. We ask you to be with us now as we leave the building. Keep us safe until the next point of time. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for visiting with us at the Sunset Road Church of Christ, which meets at 611 611 Sunset Road here in Burlington, New Jersey, zip code 08016. We hope something was said today that would bless your heart, bless your spirit, bless your walk with the Lord, and uh, have you to walk even closer than perhaps you've walked in the past. Our motto here is you have only one time to be a stranger here at the Sunset Road Church of Christ. We really want you to come as friends, but the secret is we want you to as family. God bless.